So, in this module, now we will focus a bit more on this uh, Boolean functions and when are they linearly separable and not linearly separable. And the reason I we want to delve into this is that we just saw that the perceptron uh, model or the per even the perceptron learning algorithm only has guarantees when the data is linearly separable. So, now what are these linearly separable Boolean functions or rather what are Boolean functions which are not linearly separable. So, that is something that we want to understand, right. Uh, so, let us uh, see one such simple example and this is a famous XOR function that all of you know about. So, this is what the XOR function looks like and now let us see what happens, right. So, if I want to implement this using a perceptron, then these are the four inequalities that my weights should satisfy, right. So, for 0, 0 inputs, when I plug in this formula, the output should be less than 0. For 0, 1, 0, it should be greater than or equal to 0. For 0, 1, greater than or equal to 0. And for 1, 1, again less than 0, right. So, let us just expand this. So, this is what the first condition says, right. I will just expand the first one and not do it for the others. W0 plus W1 into 0 because x1 is 0 plus W2 into 0 because x2 is 0 should be less than 0. And that leaves us with the condition that W0 should be less than 0. Similarly, I will expand the other condition and it leaves me with the condition that W2 should be greater than or equal to minus W0, W1 should be greater than or equal to minus W0 and then the last condition is W1 plus W2 should be less than minus W0, right. And you can see that you cannot satisfy these four inequalities, right. There is one quantity which is greater than minus W0, another quantity which is greater than minus W2 not and I have added these two quantities and I want it to be less than W0, that cannot happen, right. So, if I just add the two inequalities, I will get W1 plus W2 is greater than or equal to minus W0, right. So, I cannot simultaneously satisfy all these four inequalities, right. So, that means I cannot find a set of Wi's such that all my positive points will be on one side and my negative points will be on the other side. That means this is not a linearly separable function, right, okay. And we can see this from the diagram, right. So, here is these four points, right. So, you have this two negative points sitting at 0, 1 and 1, 0 and two positive points sitting at 0, 0 and 1, 1, right. And now, you can go home and practice this. You can try to adjust these weights uh, uh, w1, w2 as much as you want, right. But you will not be able to draw a line such that the two positive points are on one side and so many of you will guess from the figure itself, it is not possible, right. You cannot have a line such that only the positive points are on one side and uh, only the negative points are on the other side. You cannot draw such a line. So, it is clear from the figure and it is actually clear from the inequalities, the set of inequalities that you see there, right. So, this is not going to be possible, okay? So, this is an example of a function, a simple Boolean function which is not linearly separable, right. Now, the reason we are talking about uh, data, uh, not linearly separable functions because most real world data is going to be not linearly separable, right. So, here suppose you have uh, two classes of people, right, people who uh, like uh, machine learning and people who do not like machine learning, right. Now, it is going to be the case that there are some people here, uh, maybe the blue guys here, right, okay. Uh, which satisfy all the characteristics of what the guys who like machine learning satisfy, but they still do not like it, right. And same way the other way around also, right. So, you could think of it, a more e easier example would be that if you have a certain locality, right, and you might assume that all people on that locality speak a particular language, right. But there might be a few people there who do not speak that language or speak another language, right. And so, there would always be this outliers, right. So, its data will never be linearly separable, right. And it need not just be outliers, you could have other things also. Now, this is a very good example, there is no outlier here. The people in the inner circle maybe behave a certain way, people in the outer circle behave a certain way. There is no outlier here, but I cannot draw a linear decision boundary to separate the yellow points from the purple points, right. So, this is very much common in many real world situations, right. So, this constraint that I can only deal with data which is linearly separable is something which is not acceptable in the long run, right. So, we will have to move beyond this perceptron model because the perceptron model can clearly handle only linearly separable data, right, okay. Now, this can handle is again something which is to be defined, right? What do I mean by can handle? We will come back to this in a later uh, uh, lecture. But for now, I guess you have a rough idea of what I mean, right. It cannot find a line which separates the positive points from the negative points, okay. Uh, 
So now with a single perceptron, we cannot do this. Right? Now what I'm going to show is that with a network of perceptrons, you can do that. With a network of perceptrons, whatever a network means, I've not defined what a network means, we'll define that. With that, you can separate positive points from a negative points, even if the data is not linearly separable to begin with. Right? But before we see that, so you start with this uh, question, right? So how many Boolean functions can you design from two inputs? So let me start with some easy ones and then we'll try to calculate the number of functions. And I, once I show you a few patterns, you should be able to guess the number of functions. So these are two inputs given to the, you. And here's one function that you know, which is the always off function. Similarly, the always on function. And you can see that from the numbering that there are going to be 16 such functions possible, right? And it simply follows that you have these four uh, outputs, right? And each output could take zero or one value. So you'll have two raised to uh, four, which is 16, which is actually two raised to two uh, uh, raised to two, right? So uh, the, the, this is the or function, then this is the and function, and then similarly, you can construct other functions, right? So in uh, of these, how many are linearly separable? So you can, go and work this out on your own uh, and turns out that all except XOR and the not XOR function are linearly separable. Right? You can go back and verify this. It's so out of 16, there are two functions which are not linearly separable. So in general, how many Boolean functions can you have from n inputs? It is 2 raised to 2 raised to n. Right? So that's what happened here. It was n was 2. So you had 2 raised to 2 raised to 2 functions. You can go back and convince yourself that if n is equal, I mean, if you have a general n number of inputs, then the number of Boolean functions would be 2 raised to 2 raised to n, okay? Now, of these, how many are not linearly separable? So, when you had 16 functions, 2 are not linearly separable. So, if you have 2 raised to 2 raised to n functions, how many would be not linearly separable? So, many of you would try to say that the answer is n. That's not the correct answer. In fact, this is an unsolved problem. So you can go back and try looking for an answer for this, right? But that's that's not the point. The point is that there are going to be some functions which are not linearly separable, right? And if that is the case with the simple Boolean functions, and I said in real world, we have more complex cases where the data will not be linearly separable, right? So we need to have a way of dealing with not linearly separable functions. We need to have a way of dealing with them in the generic case when your inputs and outputs are uh, not Boolean at all. But for now, in this lecture, at least try to see if you can so have a solution for the case where your inputs and outputs are a Boolean. So, so that's what we'll do for now, okay? So I'll end this module here. And in the next module, we'll try to come up with a network of perceptrons which can handle Boolean functions which are not linearly separable even though we know that a single perceptron cannot handle Boolean functions which are not linearly separable.